Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. I want to know the differences for tapping into sexual energy for men and women. And I want to go with how do women do it, but then how do men do it? And, or is it the same? All right. Well, there's a few things to address there. Um, I mean, like in my own personal experiences, before I read anything about sex or really, you know, studied anything, I had in my own experiences, these sense of sex being this portal for transformation, right? Like this idea, like there were other states of consciousness that would open to me. I would emerge out of my sexual encounters feeling really inspired and more of myself. I used to use the term self-realization. That's how I felt. It's like these parts of me that have been superimposed culturally uh, that weren't really me that I'd adapted over the years fell away and I became more of my true self. And so I'd already had this instinctive sense that sex was much more powerful than we were being led to believe. And then when I read about Taoism and Tantra, those things just echoed the experiences that I'd already been having. And then years later, I was, yeah, definitely tickled to find that, that lone chapter 10 in Napoleon's um, what is it? Think and Grow Rich book yeah. about sex and transmutation. It's written in 1927, right? So he's interviewing all of these moguls about how they can become their, their patterns of success to try to give a model to other people. And then he has this it's all important chapter about sex and using your sexual energy as a creative power source. And so all of these things have echoed the, as I said, what was opening up to me through my own personal experiences. And then through my own studies, especially in Taoist philosophy, using more techniques like, say, harnessing breath work. So, look, I, I, my, the big barometric question that I ask people is, does sex leave you feeling energized, revitalized, transformed, and like it changed your life? And if the answer is no, then you're doing it wrong. And that's not a moral <laughs> judgment as it is as much as it is to say that there's a way of having sex that gives you energy or takes away energy, right? That leaves you feeling like you want to go and run a marathon. And that's the big question I give to men, right? Is if you're practicing breathing techniques and recirculating your sexual energy, after you have sex, whether you orgasm or not, because I think there's still ways that men can have orgasms, but if they're recirculating that energy, they'll find a very minimal loss of energy that they want to go to the gym. They literally want to go for a run rather than passing out, which tends to be the default action that happens after a man has had an orgasm. And then, so in that whole Tantra Taoist philosophy, the concept is that men lose a lot of energy through ejaculation. And yeah. what I've seen and witnessed in my own relationships and with clients over the years is that if men are taught to breathe and recirculate that energy, then they can, even if they have an orgasm, they will lose a minimum of energy, right? So there would be a question about whether if you're really deeply practicing this recirculation and breath work, whether you are truly losing energy, I suspect you still are, but much less than if you weren't practicing this conscious breathing. And then for women, there's a concept that women lose a lot of that energy, not so much through orgasms and unconscious sex, but through menstruation, through unconscious menstruation. And so there's techniques to have women recirculate that energy in the same way. So rather than just dumping out that energy the way, say, men do at orgasm and many women do through their menstruation and they feel the, the similar symptoms, they feel tired and mm. low energy and even depressed and like immobilized, that's a symptom that we've lost energy, right? And so I'm all about this barometer, what's giving us energy or taking away energy. And then there's techniques for both men and women to revive themselves and become revitalized through these experiences. And even women, I would say, during sex can practice the same kinds of breathing techniques and gain more energy. And so people will say to me, or they have this assumption that, you know, my favorite thing about sex is like the pleasure and the orgasm. I'm like, well, that's great, but I'm really into the self-realization and I'm really into the creative um, power and flow that I get. Like I'll have sex and run to my computer. You know, I noticed this early on, like I would just be so inspired with all these ideas that I would run to my computer and start writing them all down. And that's, again, that's a barometer for me of whether we're taking this energy and then tapping into it, harvesting this energy as a power source, and then we have it available to channel into every other aspect of our lives. And that affects everything from our intimate relationship, our health, our body weight, 
our uh, mental capacity, our creativity, our finances, I found that there's a direct correlation to how tapped in people are to their sexual energy and every other aspect of our lives. And yet most people don't make that connection because they've been taught there is no connection, right? Your sex life kind of exists in isolation in some remote port part of your life. And it's not, has no you know, influence on anything else that you do.